Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon is just a few hours away from premiering as of the time I'm recording this. And we have a few things to discuss. There was a new trailer recently that dropped for the show. And David Zaslov and Warner Brothers Discovery are apparently very optimistic about this, having spent a record $100 million to market this show. That's above and beyond a reported $200 plus million dollar production budget. That's a heck of a marketing campaign for a program like this on television. And I think it's going to pay off. And David Zaslov is already doing a bit of a victory lap as we'll talk about some recent articles from Deadline Magazine. Stay tuned. Let's get into it. I may dare to challenge us. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there as always. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video who may not yet be subscribed to the channel, please take a moment, turn that little red subscribe button just below me to gray. Make sure you hit the subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. I want to make sure that I hear from everybody out there. Are you going to be watching this Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon? Are you skipping it? Were you so maligned by the season eight or the final season of House of the Dragon that you were disappointed and you don't want to watch this, this new prequel? I know there's a lot of different thoughts out there. I know I have a lot of friends on YouTube that were... Uh, really gut punched by the final season of, of Game of Thrones and may not even bother to watch this. And I totally understand that. But my curiosity is getting the better of me and I will be watching tonight. And that's exactly what David Zaslov and company over at Warner Brothers Discovery is counting on. Let's look at some of these new articles from Deadline Magazine. Let's talk about when the show is going to drop. We're going to talk about understanding the Nielsen numbers that are going to come out on this because they're going to be different than what some people are used to because we have a split release. Obviously, HBO still has a traditional delivery as well as a streaming delivery. That is going to that is going to make the numbers appear to be different. So I want you to be aware to see how successful or not successful this show is. We're going to have to look at two different sets of Nielsen numbers to do that as they come out hopefully in the next few days at least for the linear delivery through your cable or satellite TV provider with standard HBO as opposed to HBO Max streaming. So let's look at these articles. So first off, we just had a new trailer drop a couple of days ago. You can check that out. I'll leave the link to the deadline articles in the description of the YouTube video. Of course, you can head over to YouTube itself and just look up House of the Dragon. But one of the things I wanted to bring up here, just to let everybody know, House of the Dragon premieres Sunday. That's today, August 21st at 9 p.m. Eastern or Pacific on HBO. Now, of course, that depends if you're looking at a linear delivery feed, whether you have HBO East or HBO West, depending on your cable or satellite TV provider. And it will also be available to stream on HBO Max. Now, we presume at about the same time. And of course, this is going to be relatively time zone dependent. So just keep an eye out for that. New episodes of the 10 episode season will debut weekly at the same time leading up to the finale on October the 23rd. So according to IMDb Pro, the first episode of House of the Dragon will have a 66-minute runtime, so not terribly long, but certainly not short either. At an hour and six minutes, that should give the writers a good amount of time to introduce us to this new prequel-era world and a few of the headline characters that we will be following as we go along with this new show. And again, David Zaslov is definitely hoping for a big turnout tonight. As we can see here, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslov congratulates the staff ahead of the House of Dragon premiere. This article is from August 19th uh, from Anthony DeHalessandro. Quote, the next big cultural moment, HBO's largest campaign ever, reached 130 million people. Let's read a little bit from this article exclusive to Deadline in an email to staffers this morning. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslov congratulated the HBO team and the overall conglom on what looks to be a fantastic weekend for both the linear channel and HBO Max in the premiere of the Game of Thrones spinoff House of the Dragon. And I want you to keep that in mind for a minute, the linear channel and HBO Max, because those are still two separate entities. And we're going to talk about why that's important in terms of at least the Nielsen ratings, which is the end-all be-all measurement for what the fan interest or the watching of this show actually turns out to be. Not only 
Was this the biggest marketing campaign in HBO's history, reaching 130 million people in the U.S. for the $200 million production? Again, just in the U.S. That's a heck of a reach. But the CEO points out that the Endeavor exemplified a revived studio that is, quote, committed to building one team with one mission. We've heard from sources that House of the Dragon marketing campaign is indeed bigger than anything HBO has ever pushed, including the second season of Euphoria and the final season of Game of Thrones, which averaged 46 million per episode domestically. Talk about growing a franchise when GOT premiered in 2011, its first episode drew 4.3 million viewers. That's a total figure over the course of its watch. That's not just the first night or the first couple of days. That's probably over the the course of the first couple of weeks. Because again, you have to remember back then, HBO Max was really just sort of coming around when Game of Thrones ended. So this is going to be a very different dynamic to see how many people are still watching through the linear delivery versus how many people are watching on HBO Max. And those numbers are probably going to come out at different times, at least on the official reporting from Nielsen. And what everybody has to understand is that Nielsen measures linear delivery television much differently than they do streaming content. Streaming content has been up to this point measured in minutes watched. We've seen that now for several months as we've tracked it here on Valiant Renegade. Whereas Nielsen's recording of linear delivery, that is to say watching something through your cable provider, your satellite provider, or over broadcast antenna, which of course HBO does not come through, that's measured in terms of eyeballs on the TV as opposed to time that is watched. So It's very possible that we're going to see a big number come for HBO Max and a much smaller number coming from linear delivery or vice versa, depending on how they break this measurement out. So I just want to caution everybody when we see initial numbers for Game of Thrones, make sure that what you're looking at is either the total picture or it may just be streaming or it may just be linear delivery. That's where it's going to get a little confusing because other places like Netflix or Amazon Prime, or Disney Plus, well, they only have streaming measurements, right? Samba TV measures streaming measurements. Nielsen measures streaming measurements from those guys because there is no linear delivery for those other entities. So you have to factor that into account. So I think it's going to be fun to kind of see how they map this out with the streaming measurements. Now, I want to share this other piece from this article as well because I think this is going to give us a good idea of what what HBO's newest series, this Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon, is going to have to beat. Again, from the same Deadline article, in regards to HBO viewing records and what House of the Dragon is up against, Euphoria Season 2 episodes averaged 19.5 million viewers each, each, across all platforms, making it the best performance of a season for any HBO series other than Game of Thrones since 2004. Viewership for season two's premiere of the Zendaya-led show climbed to 19 million total viewers in the U.S. by February 28th. So again, that's a pretty healthy ladder to climb. So apparently Euphoria has been a very popular show for them. But David Zaslav obviously is expecting this show, this Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon, to do even that much better because they talked about how robust the marketing campaign was. Well, later on in the day, on August 29th, Deadline Magazine was able to find out just how much was spent on this show's marketing. And that was a whopping, massive, 100 million plus dollar marketing campaign. Plus, that means it was way more than 100 million. If it's 100 plus, it's probably getting closer to 120 to 125, I wouldn't be surprised. And of course, that's just what they allocated to boost the show at its premiere. That does not include or would not ostensibly include anything that they will spend going forward as the show builds through its 10 episode arc for this first season. There's going to be continuously more spending on this. And I have a feeling that $100 million after they have a big success in opening weekend, they're going to throw even more money at it. And this opening paragraph from this exclusive scoop for Deadline Magazine really says it all. For all the noise about David Zaslov's quest to find $3 billion in cost-saving initiatives at the newly merged Warner Brothers Discovery, what remains important to the new CEO is to spend on content where those dollars pay off. And where is that? 
Why? On the launch of HBO's near $200 million, that's the production budget, Game of Thrones spinoff series House of the Dragon, premiering this Sunday. Sources inform Deadline that HBO's biggest marketing campaign ever is valued at over $100 million in media spend. That's a combo of ad spot value and hard cash shelled out. That's a theatrical tentpole-sized marketing budget by all accounts, not some thrifty Netflix-type push to subscribers on its menu system. And Zaslov pointed out today, in his congratulatory memo to staffers, obtained by Deadline that we just referenced before we, we checked out this article, before House of the Dragon's debut, it's already paid off with the series campaign having reached nearly 130 million people in the U.S. alone. If you followed me here on Valiant Renegade before, you know we talk about the box office quite a bit and how movies and their production budgets and their marketing budgets are related and intertwined in terms of the total cost of a production project, giving us an idea of what they have to make at the theater to break even and cut a profit on it. $100 million is something you expect to see for major action movies, especially like superhero epics. Think, you know, think Marvel and DC, for example. Those are the kind of big theatrical productions that command $100 plus million dollar price tags on their marketing campaign. All the Marvel movies have had it for the last several years, each one of them individually. Top Gun Maverick, as a matter of fact, just had a $150 plus million dollar marketing campaign when it started, and I promise you they probably spent another 50 or $60 million since then with as, with as good a performance as that movie has had in the theaters. Expect to see the same sort of thing with House of the Dragon, this Game of Thrones prequel, because if this is a big hit at launch, if they pull in 10 plus million for the opening premiere or 20 million for this premiere, which is very likely that they will do, I'd be surprised at this point if they haven't considering Euphoria's performance, then that means Zaslav and company are going to throw more good money after good money on this one. And in this same Deadline article, another kind of final interesting piece from the article itself in regards to the future successes of HBO Max, Zaslav has made it clear that it's in the catalog of series and marquee Warner Brothers theatrical titles hitting the service 45 days after they're in cinemas. Warner Brothers Discovery Bean Counters see zero upside to distributing movies directly to HBO Max like the previous Warner Media regime under Jason Kilar. As a reminder, Jason Kalar was let go by David Zaslov for that very reason. It's a tremendous waste of money, and their availability in theaters and homes simultaneously diminishes their patina as well as their resonance in subsequent ancillary windows. Not to mention there's research out there to prove that fresh subscribers come for a movie and then bail on the service. It's the weekly drop of hot episodic series such as House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, which keeps the subs locked in. Not to mention windowed theatrical films on HBO Max click better, better than day and date releases. So there you have it. They understand where to put their products. They understand what goes in theaters and what goes on HBO Max. And if they're going to put movies on HBO Max, big ones especially to make sure that they have their just due, their exclusivity remains in theaters for at least 45 days before hitting the service because apparently both HBO Max click-throughs for those movies are better they're better than they were on the day and date release schedule because of audience confusion and, again, a frank lack of interest. So this is this is kind of pointing to everything we've been talking about here on Valiant Renegade for over a year. So I'm interested to see Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon tonight. Maybe you are, maybe you are not. But please make sure you leave a comment below and let me know one way or the other. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And until next time, folks, take care. Take care.